Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. It's good to be able to come and worship God together. Um, I hope uh, you had a wonderful week this week and a week that the Lord uh, was able to use you and bless you uh, through uh, various ways. Um, just a couple things. Uh, we, um, we are uh, still working at uh, trying to get the service. I was told the church doesn't have to reopen uh, because the church officially never closed, but we have to regather. Um, and so we're going to use that term. We're going to be regathering, hopefully in June. Um, I talked with the mayor of Chester today, or uh, this week, and, um, and he said he's a pastor. He said they're planning on, uh, on starting the beginning of June for their services. And so uh, hopefully we'll be able to do the same thing. Uh, but a couple things, just a reminder, if you do come to the service, make sure you bring a mask. Um, you know, just um, we're, we're, not, we're not going to say you have to wear a mask. Um, but, you know, if somebody asks you, uh, you know, we want to be sensitive to uh, other people. We want to be sensitive to their needs. And so, uh, so you know, make sure you bring a mask. And also try to sit uh, six feet apart from other people. Uh, there are plenty of room in the sanctuary. So if you do come, make sure you follow those rules. Um, but as I said, as of right now, we're not regathering until June. Uh, but, uh, but Lord willing, we will start in June. Uh, we did have our Easter service planned for June uh, 14th, if I'm not mistaken, and that's going to be pushed back just because part of our Easter uh, celebration and our Resurrection Sunday celebration, we want to have our handbells and do some specials with handbells, and they will need a couple weeks to practice uh, after we can start regathering. So uh, keep that in mind, but uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Today we're going to talk about hope. Um, you know, we, we do need hope, and we will see today that our hope is found in Jesus Christ. Um, but uh, so, uh, so let's start here today by singing our first song, "Victory in Jesus." Great little song, a song we sing regularly at our recovery in our recovery program on our RU ministry, and uh, it's just a, a great little song about how we have victory in our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's sing together. <laughs> shouting out right there, precious blood. Um, his blood is precious. Without the shedding of his blood, there would be no remission of sin. And uh, we uh, need to thank the Lord for his blood all the time. Let's uh, open with a word of prayer. Let's remember those we need to uh, keep before his throne of grace. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to come before your throne of grace today. You're a God who loves us. You're a God who ministers to us. Lord, even in the midst of trials, even in the midst of difficulties, we find that our victory is always in Jesus Christ. What a great hope we have in you. And so, Lord, 
as people are watching this morning, as uh, people uh, will be listening later on throughout the day and throughout the week, we just pray that they would find their hope, they would find their victory in you. Minister to their needs, minister to, their, uh, to, uh, to each and every issue that they have. We do thank, Lord, of Rebecca Zanker and, and her mom, Lord, as her mom has been struggling. Uh, we, just, uh, we just uplift her before your throne. And, uh, Lord, we just ask for your hand of mercy to be upon them. But, Lord, there's a lot of people today that have, uh, have either lost loved ones or who, um, who have uh, been going through some difficult times. And, Lord, we just pray that, Lord, you would provide for their every need, physically, spiritually, emotionally, um, and, uh, and financially, Lord. Uh, minister, minister to us today as we worship together, that, Lord, your grace would be with us, that your Holy Spirit would move upon uh, our hearts, that, Lord, we may be different than when we first um, came into your presence today. And so, Lord, you work mightily. I do thank you uh, in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. As we study, uh, or as we'll be studying and looking at hope here today, um, that we're going to sing our next song. It's the words are on PowerPoint. Sing with us if you want to. Um, the solid rock. Um, you know, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And that's where our hope is. If uh, you're here today, listening to us today, and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have no hope. Um, that there is great hope to know that my Savior, that my Lord, that my God, that my Father um, is, um, is a God who holds tomorrow. He knows what it's all about. He knows what's going on. He knows what's, um, what the issues are in my life. He knows what the issues are in your life. And, uh, and our hope is found in Him. Um, if you have not... Um, uh, if you have not uh, accepted him as your Lord and Savior, would you consider doing that here today? I know that would be, uh, that would be a great uh, testimony uh, to be able to share that during this time of quarantine, you came to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you do know him, sing the song as our, uh, as our, as our cry of victory. Our hope is found in Jesus Christ. Let's sing together. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. For praise the song and rock my sin, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. In his oath is covered and his blood support me in the whelming flood. All around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground. Amen. Ladies, thank you. Thank you for helping me this morning with music and appreciate your, your ministry of music. At this time, we're going to ask if uh, uh, Pastor Russ Loomis, he's our guest speaker today, he's going to come. And, uh, you know, we're not, uh, we're not allowed down in Delaware, but he's allowed up here. And so, um, you know, brother, come and share what the Lord has laid upon your heart. Amen. Or we're not supposed to shake hands. No, do not shake my hand. I need to go disinfect. <laughs> yes, you do. Well, folks, it is my pleasure to uh, be here this morning. Uh, Pastor Randy said I'm a guest speaker. Uh, this is my church, too. And, uh, but I am from uh, all the way from down in Delaware, 10 minutes away. So I'm glad to be here with you this morning. And I thank you for, uh, I know, I'm, I'm looking right directly at the camera right now, and I know that there are at least a couple uh, of people that uh, are listening right now that don't normally uh, listen in, and uh, I just pray this morning that you listen, and you take good notes, and you listen to God speaking in your heart. Uh, the number one topic of the last couple of months, I don't need to tell you that, I mean, it was toilet paper, 
uh, we got beyond the toilet paper, and then it, and then it was uh, haircuts. Uh, I've given myself three of those already, although the back of my hair I can't do, so it's looking like a mullet. But, uh, you know, the, the number one conversa part of the conversation uh, is the coronavirus. I don't need to tell you that. It's, it's uh, all the way around the world. And so, uh, uh, and everybody's got their theory as to how it started and what happened. And, and I can only tell you this. My theory is that the evil one, the wicked one, Satan, was behind the whole thing. And that's the, the God of this world, small g. And the God of the universe, our Heavenly Father, is going to stop it. Amen. Uh, he's in control. We need to remember that. God is in control. And uh, so uh, how it started and all that good stuff, uh, that's history now. Um, but we're, uh, we're going to depend on God. Um, but there are some, uh, I mean, we know true facts. It's not an opinion. It's not a guessing game. We know the fact of the matter is, there's a lot of people who have gotten sick. There's a lot of people who have died. Uh, people who have lost their jobs. Uh, people who have lost uh, loved ones. People who are, are uh, th their rent is past due now. Their mortgage is past due. And there's all these things, and they're saying, if I could only have my job back, if I could only have money in my pocket, if I could only have money in my, uh, in my account, uh, you know, everything would be all better. And uh, I'm going to tell you this right now, I'm going to disagree with all of those things. Uh, I believe the number one thing that we need above everything else is hope. Pastor Randy already mentioned that this morning, uh, that our hope is, is built on Jesus Christ. And I'm going to get into that a little bit, but uh, uh, some people today are, are discouraged. Uh, others are depressed, and frankly, others are despondent. Uh, there are those who have absolutely given up hope because they think they have no hope. Um, and, and I just want to encourage you this morning, that is not true. It, it, it's not true. If you, have, if you feel like you have no hope, put your hope and your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. And he will give you that hope that you are desperately in need of today. Um, many people are wondering, wondering if we're living in the twilight zone right now. I mean, it's just gotten, it's just gotten a, a bit crazy. Uh, and that's an understatement. We're not living in the twilight zone. God has much, God's word has much to say about hope. As a matter of fact, uh, the word hope is found in the word of God, the Bible, uh, over 125 times. You say, Russ, how do you know that? Well, I read my Bible last week, the whole thing, and it came up with 127. No, I didn't read the whole Bible. Uh, not, not in one week. But there's, it's mentioned 120-something uh, times in the Word of God. And by the way, it's not always positive. I wrote down one verse that says this, uh, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 7, it says, When the wicked man dies... His expectation shall die also, and the hope of unjust men will die. You know, some people put their hope in the strangest things, money. Oh my goodness, I know that if I have all this money, I'm going to be okay. Well, what are you going to do with all that money when your heart stops beating? Money is not the answer, and money is not the hope that we need. Yeah, it's nice to have money. Uh, if I ever have any, I'm going to tell you about it. But it, it's, it, it's nice to have some, but uh, imagine, imagine what happens when the person dies with no hope. When that person dies. Uh, let me, let me uh, tell you, I was going to wait until the end to fit this in, but it seems like right here God wants me to, to mention this right now. When I got saved, September 16, 1977, um, I, boy, I couldn't wait to tell people about Jesus, including my friends. Oh, my goodness gracious, my friends. Uh, I still look back with, with fondness, and I mean that sincerely, uh, with, uh, with the friends. But um, you'd have thought that I uh, told them the most horrible thing in the whole world. They, most of them kind of dropped me like a hot potato. 
And I, because I was talking to them about Jesus, because I know what Jesus had done in my life and was doing in my life, and, and I wanted them, and I was so excited about that, I wanted them to experience the same thing. And they're looking at me like, what in the world has happened to Russ? Well, the same thing happened to one of my uh, neighbors who knew me from uh, when I was an infant. I mean, she knew me for, almost from day one. And I was so excited uh, I didn't live in our hometown at the time, but I came back for a visit, and I was so excited about telling her about Jesus and what he had done in my life. And, and uh, so I went over there, and, and uh, of course, she's, you know, she's talking to me like the little boy that she knew since, uh, like I said, since I was an infant. And I told her about what happened in my life and how Jesus changed my life and how Jesus could change your life, I said to her. And she kind of looked at me with that condescending look. You know, I'm, I'm so happy for you, Russ. I really am. I, I'm, I'm so happy for you. But, you know, I'm, I'm fine. But thank you. Thank you for... And very, very condescending. And I, you know, I thought, okay, well, uh, we'll, we'll just... Uh, I'll keep praying for her. And as it turned out, I, I don't remember if I ever saw her again because I was only home on a visit that time. And, and uh, so some years later, I get a phone call from one of my sisters, and she said, Russ, I just want you to know that uh, this lady uh, passed away yesterday. And of course, I was, I, I was sick in my heart because of what she told me. And she said, um, Russ, just before she just before she died, she turned to her husband who was sitting there visiting with her. She turned to her husband and she said, "I'm afraid because I don't know where I'm going." And I'll tell you what, to this day, it breaks my heart. She had an opportunity to come to Christ. She had an opportunity to repent of her sins. Uh, the Bible says that we're all sinners. I don't need to convince you of that. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. We all are. And she was too proud and too religious to, um, to bend the knee, really, to uh, ask the Lord to forgive her and, and, and ask Jesus Christ to come into her heart and save her. So... Uh, so I, I, I'm just, I was thinking about her this morning. Uh, as I said, I was going to talk to you a little bit about her uh, later on. But uh, 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 it was just heartbreaking. Um, in, in, uh, uh, in Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews, uh, that's in the New Testament. You don't need to turn there. But in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, I want to read this verse to you because it's such a powerful, powerful verse. It says, now... Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, if you may be listening and saying, what in the world does that mean? I, I, I have no idea what that means. And uh, now faith is the substance of things for, uh, the, the, uh, the substance of things hoped for. We're talking about hope this morning. And uh, the hope that we're talking about is not cross your fingers, you know, oh, I, I, hope, I, I hope I win the lottery. You know, it's, uh, I told my wife the other day, one of the commercials that, are, that is on right now absolutely makes me crazy. They're advertising that now you can, you can get online and do your betting. And, you know, I mean, think about this. It's a Pennsylvania thing. Uh, think about this. Uh, you know, you can do this and you can win all this money. You know, they don't tell you the small print down at the bottom. You could also lose all your money. And so, so, but this is not that kind of hope. Oh, I hope I, I hope I, uh, you know, get my stimulus check. I hope I win something. It's not that kind of a hope. This is, this is the kind of hope it, it's, uh, uh, it, there, there's an expected end about it. There's a confidence assurance. When, when uh, the, the uh, I almost said Paul, we don't know who wrote the book of uh, Hebrews. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. It, it, it considers it done. It considers it done. You put your faith and your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? I am not afraid 
to this day, from, 19, from September 16th, 1977, until today, May 17th, 2020, I'm not afraid to die. I don't look forward to the pain that's usually involved in dying. I'm not looking forward to that. But I don't, uh, I'm not afraid to die. Why? Because I put my faith and my trust in Jesus Christ and in Him alone. And so we, we, there's, there's an expected end. It, it considers it done, uh, this, uh, this future faith uh, of ours. Uh, in, in the, the Apostle Paul wrote to the church of Thessalonica. Again, if you're first hearing these things, you're thinking, oh, that's a mouthful. But in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, I, I would not have you ignorant, brothers, uh, concerning them who are asleep, those who are who have been born again or saved, but who have now died. Uh, we don't need to sorrow for those folks. Of course we sorrow because we've lost a loved one, and, and that's normal and that's natural. Um, my goodness gracious, uh, uh, Pastor Randy and I, we've done enough funerals over the years to... Uh, hearts are broken at a funeral. There's a man that lived uh, just three doors away from me. Uh, I've been uh, mowing his lawn for years, and uh, he, he's been sick and, and sickly for a long time, but uh, uh, the other day I got a call from a lady across the street, and uh, she said, uh, Russ, I, I hate to tell you this, but she said, I was looking out my door a little while ago, a couple of hours ago, and I saw an ambulance pull up, and these other vehicles pull up, and then about an hour later... I saw the hearse pull up, and I thought, oh, no, and I knew it would have been him because his wife is in good health, and she's younger than him, and, and I, so I changed my clothes and, and got, you know, tried to look pastoral and went down there, and sure enough, uh, he had passed away very unexpectedly. I said he was sickly, but... but uh, it was still an unexpected thing. Um, but I immediately thought about the time, about maybe three years ago, that I sat on the steps with him talking about the Lord. And I said, Smitty, do you know the Lord is your Savior? He said, I sure do. I sh and he said it with such confidence. And, I, and, so, uh, and, and so since then, we, you know, we, I would just talk to him occasionally here and there. But the Friday before, I saw him, and I said, Hey, Smitty, how you feeling today? Ah, uh, uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Little did either one of us know that before I got to see him again, the next week, he'd be out into eternity. Amen. And so I trust him that he knows uh, the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. But, uh, uh, but the, that verse goes on to say, you know, don't, uh, don't worry about those who have, have died who are born again, who are saved, uh, that you sorrow, sorrow not, even as others who have no hope. And that what that's telling me, Paul, the Apostle Paul, who wrote that particular um, uh, epistle, uh, he's saying, you know, those who do not know Jesus Christ, they are the ones with no hope. They are the ones who are kind of putting their fingers together, crossing their fingers, and, oh, I hope when I die, I... Um, no, there's no hope for someone who leaves this earth without Christ as Savior. Back in 1997, I drove up to, uh, to a, a motel uh, just outside the airport in, in Philly. And, uh, and I'm only saying in Philly because, again, there's some that may not even know where, where I am right now. Uh, and that's in Chester, Pennsylvania. But uh, I drove up there to uh, pick up a pastor friend of mine who was going to be speaking at a special meeting. And uh, I sat in the lobby waiting for him to come down. And as I sat there, I looked across and on the wall, on the wall right across from where I was sitting, this is what it said. H period, O period, P period, E period. It says H-O-P-E canceled for today. And I thought to myself, what an odd thing, what, what, what a feeling of hopelessness. Uh, I, I found out that the, the letters stood for help 
for oncology problems and emotional support. It's an organization for families who are going through difficult times and individuals uh, who are battling with cancer. And uh, apparently that particular day, their meeting was canceled. But I thought to myself, uh, you know, imagine if someone told you, you know what, there's no hope for you today, it's canceled. Your hope is canceled. How would you feel? Well, how would any of us feel if we had to go through a day of no hope? And you know that in this world today, there are millions and millions of people who are in, in that exact position. They're, they're up in the morning time, and their lives are a mess, and at the end of the day, they look back, and there's no hope. And the next day, they get up, and they, there's no hope for, to, to get them through uh, this next day. In, pro, in, uh, in Romans chapter 5, and I'm going to, and I'm going, sorry, in Romans chapter 15. And I'm going to be in Romans here for a few minutes, and I'm going to jump back and forth, but I'm going to bring it all uh, to an end here. In Romans chapter 15, in verse number 4, the Bible says, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through patience and perseverance and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So, let me stop right there for a minute. You know where we can get our hope from? In the Word of God. It's, it talks about the, it being in the Scriptures for our hope. Now, some of you might say, uh, Russ, I've read parts of the Bible, and I don't get it. You know what? I feel your pain. Before I got saved, I read through different parts of the Bible. I had never read the Bible from cover to cover. But I had read through, read different verses in the Bible, and I thought, I don't get it. I don't, and, and there's a reason that you don't get it. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, all this is, pardon the expression, but it's, it's Greek to us. It's Greek, even though, yes, the, the New Testament was written in Greek. But it's Greek to, we can't understand it because we don't know the author of the Bible. Some people read the Bible and they get frustrated with it. They say, especially if you start in Genesis and start working your way through, you know, a couple of, a couple of uh, books into the Bible, you get Genesis, okay, that's interesting, that's, that's kind of fun to read. And Exodus, my goodness gracious, yeah, I mean, talking about Moses, and again, back in Genesis, Abraham, I, I mean, uh, yeah, Abraham too, but Adam and, and Eve and, you know, all those good things. So uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and, and now things are going to start getting... Uh, you know, oh, I'm not really understanding. And then you get into numbers and you say, what in the world? It's all the word of God. It's all the word of God. One is, is no more important than the other. One chapter is no more important than the other chapter. But until you trust Christ as your Savior, and the Holy Spirit of God now lives within you, and that's what the word of God says over in 1 Corinthians, that the Spirit of God now lives within you. We are the temple. We are the walking temple of God. You know, He doesn't. He doesn't uh, have to meet His people in a in a building in a temple. We are the temple of God. And all of a sudden, the scales are removed from our eyes, and we read the Word of God, <clears throat> and now things start making sense. So I want to encourage you to uh, read God's Word. But before you read God's Word, trust the God of the Word. I, I, need, uh, I need you to see a couple of things here. First, we need to see what Paul wrote in the same book, in the book of Romans, in chapter 5. He says, therefore, 5, verse 1 and 2, uh, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Well, how do we get peace with God? He continues to say right there, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith, into this grace in which we stand and rejoice and hope for the glory of God. Now, that's a mouthful. There's a lot of words. Uh, I've, I've got a little grandson. He's going to turn five years old in a few days. And, and he, I mean, from the moment he wakes up until the moment he goes to sleep, his mouth is just running. <laughs> Grandpa, I have a lot of words. <laughs> yeah, you do, boy. 
You have a lot of words. Well, let me tell you something. That's a mouthful that we just read right here. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? Someone says, I feel like I have no peace. You want peace? You want peace with God? Then go through the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the peacemaker. He is the prince of peace, the Bible says. The Lord Jesus Christ. And so if you want peace, go through him. Through whom we also have access by faith into the grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope for the glory of God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring that to a head here in just a moment too. Then in Romans, same, same book, Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Now may the God of hope, oh, here we go. Now Paul says who God really is. He is the God of all hope. We live in a time where many people feel hopeless, and yet the word of God says God is the God of all hope. Fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You want real joy, real hope, and real peace? Trust the God of hope. If you've never put your faith and your trust in the God of hope, you have no idea what hope is all about. Honestly, you have no idea what hope is all about. And by the way, the word access that we just read a moment ago, it says... Uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith. The word access is found exactly three times in the Word of God. And in all three times, it's found in the New Testament. In all three times, it's talking about our having direct access to God. You say, well, I don't get it. What's so big about that? Now think about it. You can have direct access to God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't have to go to a priest, you don't have to go to a prophet, you don't have to go to a pastor, you can go directly to God all by yourself as long as you're doing it because you already know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior. Amen. I hope that you're letting this sink in. We... <laughs> We can trust, God is worthy of our trust, and we can trust this God of all hope. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 16, the Bible says that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. Now, I just want to say something about that, boldly to the throne of grace. That does not mean demanding you see some of these um, some of these guys on TV, and they just say, you know, you can demand of God this and that and the other thing. No, no, no. God tells us we can come boldly to the throne of grace. When we go, and, and, and by the way, with thanksgiving in our heart. That's what God's word says, that we need to come uh, humbly, yes, boldly, but with thanksgiving in our heart to God. There was a lady that... Uh, lived a couple of doors away from Kathy and me, and uh, uh, I, I used to do her lawn for her too. She was in, she was in rough shape, and, uh, uh, and so I'd say, her name was Barb, I'd say, Barb, um, I, I want to talk to you about Jesus. I, I want, Barb, would you like to know Jesus as your Savior? And she would say to me, she would say, oh, I'm not worthy. I'm not, she had a real gruff voice. I'm not worthy. And uh, I say, you know what, Barb? You're, you're exactly right. You are not worthy Amen. to come to Christ. And neither am I. And neither are any of you. Amen. None of us are worthy to come to Christ. But God says, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you are going through a difficult time right now, and so many people are, Jesus is telling you, come on, come on, trust me, and I'll give you rest. I said there were two things that I wanted you to see. The second is what we uh, that we have are the result uh, of this hope that God has given to us. 
When we have hope, we have comfort. When we have hope, we have courage. When, when we know the Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior, we have, the Bible says we have the Spirit of God living within us. I, I spoke about that a couple of minutes ago. That the Spirit of God literally comes and lives, dwells within us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 3, it refers to God is the God of all comfort. And so now we see that God is not only the God of all hope, he's the God of all comfort. And later on there's another verse that says he is the God of peace. This is the God. All other gods are small letter G. All other gods. I don't get, somebody says, oh, you can't say that in this time of, you know, in, in which we live, in, in this uh, uh, politically correct world. You know, everybody, no, 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 no. This is the word of God, and the God of the word says that he is the only way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is no other way to get to heaven. I don't care if it's politically incorrect or not. There is no other way to get to heaven except through Jesus Christ. Yeah. He died on the cross for your sins and my sins. He paid the penalty for your sins and my sins. And he is the only way that we can get to heaven. Now I need to bring this to a conclusion. Is your heart troubled today? In this time of coronavirus, many hearts are troubled, I promise you. Uh, be, because you, you don't know, uh, you know, how you're going to pay the rent and, or, or the mortgage. And, and, and maybe your marriage is suffering. I'll tell you what, uh, being cooped up in the house 24-7 with people that you're not used to being cooped up with, that can bring uh, a, a, a difficult time in a marriage. Uh, you who are listening to me, that maybe you're home with children, and 24-7. Uh, <laughs> this, this can be a very difficult time. And, and so uh, uh, I, I just want you to know that, that God wants to help you through this difficult time. And he will. But you know what he wants more than that? He wants you to call on him to be your savior so he can give you a home in heaven. Yeah. You're going to leave this earth one day. So am I. Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready for that day to happen in your life? If you're saved, you're a child of God, uh, you may also be going through a difficult time. If you're unsaved, God wants you to get saved. If you're saved but still going through a difficult time, I want to encourage you with this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Don't try to figure everything out. Don't try to do everything, but don't try to figure everything out. Don't try, don't, don't just sit back and let it, let it happen. Work as much as you can. Do what you can do, but trust God and ask God for wisdom. As God says, if anyone lack wisdom... Uh, ask of God and he'll give it to you liberally. Spiritual wisdom from on high. Wherever you are spiritually, I, I, I promise you, uh, God is worthy of your trust. He is worthy of your trust. The God of peace, the God of all comfort, the God of hope promises he will never leave you nor forsake you. He promises us that in the word of God. There's one, there's a consideration though, because there's, a, there's one big little word here, and that's if. He promises never to leave you nor forsake you if you put your faith and your trust in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. God promises that. That's not too much to ask. Let me read another verse before I quit. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse number 11, it says this, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you 
It says in, in the one version of the Bible to give you uh, an expected end. But it's talking about to give you hope in the future. To give you hope in the future. God will get you through this crazy coronavirus time. He promises us that. And then he'll give us hope in the future. And you know what God will never do? God will never hang a sign on your front door or hang a sign on your bedroom door or hang a sign just outside of heaven that says, hope canceled for today. It'll never happen. He loves you so much, it's ridiculous. God, you know what? I heard somebody say one time, if God carried a wallet, your picture would be in his wallet. That's how much he loves you today. He's done everything for you to get saved. He provided the way of salvation. That was his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Have you ever trusted him as your Savior? God's done it all. He's done it all. And he wants you to be saved today. He'll save you. He'll clean you up. He'll change your life. He'll give you peace and comfort and hope because he is the God of those three things. But without him, you'll never have any of those things. You'll never have peace. You'll never have comfort. You'll never have hope unless you put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. Putting your faith and your trust in religion is not going to cut it. Putting your faith and your trust in the government is definitely not going to cut it. But putting your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ and him alone, <laughs> that's going to make all the difference in the world. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't put it off any longer. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, the Bible says now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. None of us are promised tomorrow. My neighbor went to sleep that morning five, six days ago and never woke up. None of us are promised tomorrow. Why don't you trust Christ today? Let's close in a word of prayer. Father, we come before you now thanking you for the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, who loved us and gave himself for us on that cruel cross. And he paid the penalty for our sin. I pray, Father, for those who are struggling out there right now and they feel like they have no hope. I pray, Father, that today would be the day of salvation for them. Help them, Lord, work in their hearts even right this minute. Help them to bow the knee and swallow their pride and forget about religion and forget about other ways of possibly they think getting to heaven. Help them, Lord, to trust Jesus Christ and him alone today. Those who know Christ the Savior, help them today, Lord. They may be struggling. Help them today to trust in the Lord with all their heart and lean not unto their own understanding. Lord, you have uh, given us a, an expected hope uh, in the near future. We're going to trust you, Father. Thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Russ. Um, I hope uh, your heart was blessed today. Um, I hope that you will be with us as I'm using that word, Pastor Russ. I hope you will be with us, not in the same context as Pastor Russ was using it, but as he was preaching, thought came to my mind. Are you resting in Jesus Christ? Are you putting your faith? There's a verse I've been studying through Psalms. We're looking through Psalms on Sunday morning. We're also studying through Colossians on, on Wednesdays and Fridays. You can join us on Facebook. Uh, but in, in uh, Psalm 62 and verse 5, it says, My soul rests on thee alone because, it goes on says this, because my hope is in God. And that's what Pastor Russ was talking about today, is your hope and your, are you resting in him? I hope you have a restful, a peaceful, a comforting week today as you put your faith and trust in him. Let's close with the word of prayer. Father, go before us now today. Bring us back again next week. Um, bring us back throughout the week as we fellowship together. We do thank you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen.